This is a picture test in practical neuroanatomy. You may use the video as a revision for the topic or as a self-assessment tool. For the purpose of self-assessment, you may pause the video and spend your own time to read the question and come up with the answer. Then, replay the video to confirm your answer by listening to the comments and explanations. Now I will deal with the spinal cord. What type of information is transmitted by fibers of tract A? From which part of the body is the information transmitted through the fibers of this tract? This is the ventral spinocerebellar tract. It is located on the anterior aspect of the periphery of the lateral funiculus. It conveys proprioceptive information, unconscious proprioception, from the lower limb to the cerebellum. At this location, it is across the tract. The fibers cross in the anterior white commissure and the tract runs parallel with the dorsal spinocerebellar tract which is located just posterior to it. The ventral spinocerebellar tract which is already crossed in the white commissure, in the anterior white commissure at the level of the spinal cord, it will cross again in the caudal midbrain and therefore it is referred to as a double cross. As compared to the dorsal spinocerebellar tract, the fibers of the dorsal spinocerebellar tract do not decussate at all. The ventral and dorsal spinocerebellar tract, they convey proprioceptive information from the lower limb to the cerebellum. In syringomyelia, there is central cavitation of the spinal cord, usually beginning in the cervical region. Which of the following spinal cord sections is most representative of the cervical region, that's to say the region that could be affected by syringomyelia? For identifying spinal cord sections, the following rules should be remembered. First, the greatest amount of gray matter is largest in spinal segments of the cervical and lumbosacral enlargement, and this is clearly visible in um, A and B because limb innervation necessitates a lateral extension of anterior horn cells. In the thoracic section, like in C, there is relatively small amount of gray matter in the anterior horn because there are no limbs here. The anterior horn cells are only concerned with supplying the muscles of the trunk, no limbs. Second, remember that the absolute amount of nerve fibers in the white matter increases as we go higher in the spinal cord. So in the cervical region, there is a, a larger white to gray ratio, and this is seen in A. The reason for that is that in higher segments of the spinal cord, the descending fibers are not yet consumed, and the ascending fibers has reach their maximum, being added to as they ascend the spinal cord. That's why the white to gray ratio is higher uh, as we go to the rostral sections or so, rostral segments of the spinal cord. And this is demonstrated in, in A. So uh, A is a cervical section that could be mostly affected by syringomyelia, although this section doesn't show the disease, but it's a cervical section. It has a lateral extension of the anterior horn. It has the highest white to gray ratio. And in addition to that, as you can see here, that the dorsal funiculus is segregated into a, into a medial fasciculus gracilis and a lateral fasciculus cuneatus. In lower sections of the spinal cord, like in the lumbar region or lumbosacral region represented in B, you can, the dorsal funiculus only contains fasciculus gracilis. Fasciculus cuneatus only appears in sections above T7, mid-thoracic level. So they are only present, fasciculus cuneatus is present in the upper thoracic and cervical regions. So the presence of the fasciculus cuneatus also supports that the section belongs to the cervical region. Another point here is that 
A does not contain a lateral horn. The lateral horn is a characteristic of thoracic and upper two lumbar segments, and it can be clearly seen in C, uh, but it is not seen in, in A. Uh, so again, it supports the absence of this lateral horn, supports that it is not a thoracic segment, it is more likely to be a cervical segment. A 75-year-old atherosclerotic patient presented with paraplegia together with bilateral thermoanalgesia and anesthesia of lower limbs. Position sense, light touch and vibration were normal. Which of the following arteries A to C was the most likely occluded? The arteries are posterior spinal arteries A and B, posterior spinal arteries. Each is a branch of posterior inferior cerebellar artery. C is the anterior spinal artery. It's formed by contribution from each vertebral artery. The spinal arteries, whether posterior or anterior, they extend the length of the cord, but they are small vessels, and most of their blood comes from reinforcements by anterior and posterior radicular arteries. Now, the medical condition described here is called anterior cord syndrome where the anterior spinal artery, the primary blood supply to the anterior portion of the spinal cord is interrupted. This will cause ischemia or infarction of the spinal cord in its anterior two thirds. The loss of motor function is due to interruption of corticospinal tract. Here is the site of the lateral corticospinal tract and anterior corticospinal tract. Loss of pain and temperature sensation is due to interruption of the spinothalamic tract. This is the location of the ventral and lateral spinothalamic tracts. So all these, both these tracts or all these tracts are located within the area that is affected by ischemia resulting from occlusion of anterior spinal artery. Sensations of fine touch vibration and proprioception are carried by the posterior columns and are preserved since they are located in the area supplied by posterior and not anterior spinal arteries. Note here that the area supplied by anterior spinal artery is much larger than that area supplied by posterior spinal arteries. What is the vertebral level of the distal end of the space A? Space A is the spinal subarachnoid space. Although the spinal cord in the adult terminates at the level of the intervertebral disc between L1 and L2, the subarachnoid space, which is located between the pia and arachnoid, is filled with CSF and extends to the level of the second sacral segment, thus creating a wide subarachnoid space called cistern, lumbar cistern. CSF may be sampled from the lumbar cistern through a lumbar puncture. And this lumbar puncture can be safely carried out using a needle inserted in the midline between the fourth and third lumbar spines or between the fourth and fifth lumbar spines. Now at these sites, L3, L4 or L4, L5, there is no danger of the needle passing through the spinal cord because the spinal cord doesn't extend to this level. It has already terminated at the level of intervertebral disc L1, L2. At the same time, spinal nerve roots, which are located here forming the coda equina, are floating in cerebrospinal fluid and will be pushed out of the harm's way if they are touched by the aspirating needle. So it is safe to perform uh, lumbar puncture through the lumbar cistern. On the surface of the body, the level of S2, where the lumbar cistern terminates, is indicated by the two skin dimples on the lower back one on either side in the sacral region. In fact, these dimples, they represent the posterior superior iliac spines, but the posterior superior iliac spines, they lie at the level of S2. The spine of L4, which can be used as a landmark for the lumbar puncture, either passing above it or below it, the spine of L4 lies at the supracrystal plane, the level of the iliac crests. And so it is safe to pass a needle above L4 or below L4, above or just above or just below the supracrystal plane, the needle uh, will pass in the subarachnoid space. Here it is represented in A 
but in the procedure that I'm talking about in lumbar puncture there will be no more spinal cord at that level the subarachnoid space only contains nerve roots and the phylum terminali floating in cerebrospinal fluids by the way this section is located in the cervical region you can see the shape of the gray matter with the lateral extension of the anterior horn also there is a fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus and the dorsal funiculus there is a large white to gray ratio so all features of the cervical segment of the spinal cord in addition if you look at the vertebra the vertebra is a cervical vertebra and, and you can notice here that it has a bifid spine and there is a foramen transversarium which is traversed by a vertebral artery